Hi everyone, this is Mr. Hall and this is a quick video about alternative ways of extracting metals. Um, I've talked before about sustainability and about how metals are a finite resource and they're running out very quickly. So this video will just go through some ways in which we'll extract metals in different ways um, so we get more of them. So the objective of today, there's basically twofold. The first thing is we'll explain why alternative methods of metal extractions are needed and we'll also describe uh, the key steps in two relatively new ways of extracting metals which are phytomining and bioleaching. So first of all, let's talk about why we need these different um, methods. Now if you have a look at this graph, um, it basically charts the price of copper uh, between the years of 1998 to about 2010 and as you can see slowly but surely that price is going up. So that's a description of what's going on and you could use data to identify those trends if you really wanted to. Now, in terms of explaining why that's happening, it's because the copper's running out. Okay, now copper is a very useful metal. It's used for uh, like pots and pans. It's a really great conductor. So it's used for electricity conduction. Um, it's used quite a lot in phones. It's, it's used in a whole host of ways which we find useful for the products that we use in our daily lives. And it's running out. And this is a real problem. Now, at the moment, we get copper out of sort of big mines like this. This is one of the biggest mines in the world is in Chile. A lot of the um, copper extraction actually is in South America, but these mines are running out and they're running out very quickly. Now these mines that we've got at the moment where you get rock out of the ground and you process it to extract the copper, they have lots of problems associated with them. Okay, so for a start, they look really bad and that's not a very good selling point for them. Also, they need lots of energy for extraction. Okay, they, and that energy will inevitably come from fossil fuels, which also isn't great. They create loads of waste on the site, so loads of kind of rubble from low grade ores which have been left over because it's economically not viable to get the copper out of them. And there's an environmental impact, so any habitats which are around this mine are going to be detrimentally affected. And crucially, high grade ore is running out. So the, the ore, which is the rock which contains that metal compound, what they basically got a lot of now is low grade ore where a very small percentage of that rock actually has copper inside it so it's not worth processing so there's huge issues with this and if we're going to be sustainable with our use of metals we cannot continue using mines of this nature now if you remember from a previous clip and what you may have learned before metals are a finite resource okay finite meaning that these resources are being used up faster than they can be replaced now these metals are quickly running out okay and these are some example figures and these are all based on the on the premise that we're using them at the same rate between now and the days which I'm giving you. Okay, so if we continue using zinc and lead at, at this current rate, they'll be depleted by 2030. Silver and iridium, very important metal, out by 2035. Copper, which is our main example, that'll be out by 2050. And rare metals will be depleted by 2090, which have more limited uses, but they're metals which we're finding more and more uses for over time. So the question is, how can we ensure that our use of metals become more sustainable? Now, there's a few ways in which we could do this. So if we just sort of have metals right at the center here. Now, the most common way in which you'll probably learn in um, other lessons in the future is you could just simply reuse metals um, in their existing form. You could recycle them. Um, you could reduce their use by finding alternatives. Or you can find alternative ways of extraction. So there's a few things you can do in order to extend the life of these metals. And what we'll do um, today is we'll talk a little bit about alternative extraction, which is here. And crucially, what they do is that they exploit low grade ores. Now, low grade ores are pretty useless for major mining sort of practices at the moment, because if you have a rock that looks a little bit like this, and only a very small amount of copper, let's say this little bit in the corner, is inside it, it's not worth the energy and effort to process the whole rock to find and get that little bit of copper. But these new techniques can, because they're not so effortful, but they still give you lots of copper if you do it on the large scale. So the first technique we'll talk about is phytomining. Now, phytomining is actually very straightforward, and all it is really is using plants to extract the metal from their ore. So step one, it's basically you've got copper ions in the soil, you've got a plant there, and what these plants do is that they absorb the copper from the roots in the soil. Now, over time, what happens is that these copper ions slowly become part of the plant. Okay, they'll be drawn up from the soil, and they may be you know, stored in the plant in different places. All right, so that's the second part. Now, what you then do is once you've got that copper plant, you burn it. Okay, so 
And this can be done on a huge scale. Okay, you can get all the plants together, you put it in one big area and you light it up. Now, because it's burning, it's a combustion reaction, which means it's going to combine with oxygen. So what you then have is that the copper ions join with oxide ions from the air to create copper oxide, which is shown here. So copper ion plus oxide ion makes copper oxide. So as a redox equation, you've got Cu2 plus plus O2 minus making CuO. So copper ion, oxide ion, and then you've got your copper oxide. Now, you probably may remember this from previous learning, but a copper oxide um, compound is basically a black powder. So when you burn it, you just have this massive amount of black powder to collect. So I've got my black powder here. And then the next step is you dissolve it in acid. Okay, there's your ash containing copper oxide and you can react it with sulfuric acid. Now, for those of you who are pretty sharp on your chemistry, you'll probably work out what the product of this is, copper oxide plus sulfuric acid. It's basically a neutralization reaction between an acid and a base and that will create copper sulfate. You'll also produce um, water in this reaction, so it'll just be diluted somewhat. Now with that copper sulfate, that blue solution, you can stick a couple of electrodes inside it and connect up in a circuit, and then you can do electrolysis. Now there's other ways in which you can do that. You can, do, you can use sort of scrap metal to do a displacement reaction if you want, and that's fine. You could also do electrolysis. Now the problem with electrolysis is that it's quite energy hungry, whereas using scrap metal to do displacement isn't as energy uh, intensive so it's it's a partially a better way of doing it but traditionally we do uh, electrolysis so you have copper growing on one of the electrodes and then you have pure copper now this is done on a huge scale to make it worth doing so you need loads and loads of low-grade copper ore to make this worthwhile but it's an effective way of exploiting low-grade ore um and that's that so the next step i'm going to be talking about the next technique is bio leaching now bio leaching it's basically using bacteria to feed on low grade ore so you get your low grade ore you put it in a massive solution um you put some bacteria in it and then that bacteria will feed on the low grade ores and extract the copper from it okay and that solution of copper ions with the bacteria in it is called a leachate okay and it kind of looks a little bit like this, this is a picture from an existing bio leaching plant um this, this i think they're just doing some tests on the um, on the solution but it will look like some kind of you know to basically just a solution um, of stuff now once you've got that solution the bacteria fed on it you can then do the techniques that we talked about previously on phyto mining okay so you can do either scrap iron or you can do electrolysis and that can extract the copper from that leachate so it's quite an effective way again on low grade ores now there's loads of pros to this process okay key thing is that you can extract copper from low grade ores which is fantastic it's not also that expensive in terms of getting the bacterium putting in a solution is actually quite a straightforward process. However, there are some cons, okay? So crucially, the leachate waste, so once you've extracted the copper, you've got this solution left over, that solution can tend to be toxic, difficult to store, difficult to deal with, unpleasant. It's also really slow, so it can take literally years to extract a decent amount of copper from a very large amount of ore. So it's not a particularly efficient process. Now, research is happening all the time to make this a faster process, and it's sort of, you know, one of the things that chemists and chemical engineers are, are working at and quite an exciting area to work in. But that's something which which does need to improve. Also, the electrolysis step, if you're not using scrap metal iron, it's very, very energy intensive, just like phyto mining. And as a result, that's a problem because it doesn't mean it's as sustainable as it could be. Now, that's a particular problem because the plants that you have to do bio leaching are huge. OK, this is a picture of one of the examples of a plant and you can see it, it takes a significant amount of space, which means you need a significant amount of energy to do your electrolysis. And electrolysis is quite an efficient way of doing it, hence why it's favoured. So you can see these techniques, whilst they're quite good at extending the lives of these metals, they do come with their own problems. And that's it. So I hope that's been useful in terms of filling your knowledge of bioleaching and phytomining, and best of luck with your studies.